is a great privilege. Everybody shall privilege. Okay. To serve him and to be called by him is only purely and absolutely by grace. Amen. Praise God. So, but but this, but we we notice that for the Karana for two Sundays now, the 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 starting point of Abraham's journey in his calling were characterized by what? A partial obedience. Partial obedience. Abraham did not obey God fully. He obeyed God only what? Partially. Ah. What was the instruction of God to Abraham? It was so clear. Genesis chapter 12. 1 to 3. Abraham must, must, must have to what? Live. Get out of his country. And then number 2 is what? Live your country. Live your father, your mother, your friends, and your what? Your acquaintances. Everything. And number 3. What's the command? Go to the land, I will show you. Three commands in this calling. I would like to, to emphasize this because I can make an emphasize law. Hindi ibig sabihin na pag naging active ka sa pananang palatay, naging kristyano ka, ay itiwanan mo na kaagad ang mga magula mo at ang mga mahal sa buhay mo. That's not the point of the Bible. The point of the Bible is palikan mo ang mahal mo sa buhay at siran mo ng bago mong buhay. Amen! Palapakan mo yung Panginoon. Praise the Lord. That's the point. But, but, but in the case of him, sa kaso ni Abraham, ito ang nagiging utos ng Diyos. At sa mga sabihin na ah, naging kristyano na ako, I will not be equally youth with my parents, with my friends, with my friends. Ayaw na sa kanila. No, that's not the point of the Bible. The point of the Bible is Go back to your friends, to your parents, to your, to, to, to your brothers and sisters, and share the gospel of salvation to them. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to be very clear about that. No, kasi baka, baka so Abraham's response to the call of God, and again, there were two failures on Abraham's obedience. Abraham obeyed the first command. What was the first command? Live this country. But what was the two disobedience? Abraham, he what? He failed to do the second and the third command. What is that? He go, but not directly to the promised land. He went where? To Haran. Chapter 11, verse 31. He left his country, but he did not go directly to the promised land. 1131. Why? Because this leads to the second disobedience. He brought with him his what? His father and his nephew. Diba na isi niya ang kanyang amang si Tera at ang kanyang nephew na sino? Si Lord. Hindi dapat. Bakit? Kasi the call was to live his what? His kindredness. To live his parents in every everything except for who? Except for Sarah. That's why. So Abraham has a partial obedience. And partial obedience is what? No, 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 no. Partial obedience means this obedience. And give us a meaning na nag obey tayo ay natutuwa na yung Panginoon sa atin. Hindi. The question is not about obedience. The question is how we obey. Do we obey God partially or or what? Or absolutely. Aha. That is why Tera, his father, means what? Delay. So Abraham was delayed for five years where? In Haran. He was delayed for five years in Haran, and Lot became what? A headache to Abraham. Lot became a headache to Abraham. Sakit ng ulo si Lot kay Abraham. 
this is a simple disobedience. Ngunit si Tera at si Lot ay naging pitik sa lalaunan ng turin ni Abraham. Chapter 12 verse 8 After the death of after the death of Tera then Abraham begins to journey to the promised land again. And what was the first place? Ito naman na review ito. Anong unang lugar na dinaknan ni Abraham tungkol sa promised land? Okay. He, he what? He shaken. And then made the old one. Chapter 12 verse 8. Then he arrived where? In Bethel. Okay. Bethel means the house of God. That is the meaning of the word Bethel. Bethel means the house of of God. And in Bethel, Abraham did two very important things in his life, in his call and his story. And in the long valley, you know what? The Abraham, sa kanyang tawag, sa kanyang buhay, sa kanyang paglalakbay sa kanyang. What are those two important things that he did when he arrived in detail? In verse 8, he what? He built his his tent and then his what? His altar. Two things that he, he, he greatly did when he arrived in detail. He, he built a tent in his altar. And what does the tent simply mean? The tent simply mean what? A temporal life, a life of journey, a pilgrim, a walk with God. A tent simply is a declaration that Abraham was equally saying, I'm just a pilgrim in this land. Amen. I'm just a stranger of this land. Promise and just, but still Abraham considered himself to be what? A stranger. And then what does this altar say to him? This altar is what? His worship and his devotion, his sacrifices to God. That is the altar. And in Hebrews chapter 11, 9 to 10, the writer of the book of Hebrews explained why Abraham just built a tent and not a mansion in the promised land. What was the reason why Abraham built a tent and not a mansion in the promised land? Because he said what? Hebrews chapter 11. Because he said, this tent is just what? Is showing that the people of God is just considering himself to be what? The stranger of this world. So yan ang kapat nating tandaan pa tayo. Ano sa akin ko na sinibig? Plan a life, you know what? It is the low range plan. But don't forget, don't forget to consider that maybe the finish line is today or tomorrow. Death is unpredictable. So don't forget that. So, so what, what have we, we discussed last time? 